Welcome back, everyone, to the first and fifteen fantasy football podcast. This is injury round, injury rounds. I'm your host, Dr. Carlos Reyes, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the 2024 outlook for one of the most talked about quarterbacks during the off season, Joe Burrow. What we're going to do is we're going to actually get into his injury history, his recovery, and what his 2024 outlook is like for this upcoming season. Now, as you guys can recall, you know, in 2023, back in August, and specifically in the preseason and training camp, he did suffer a right calf strain. You know, he uh, had to manage these things and actually had to take a lot of rest breaks, but they managed it really well. And he actually did not miss any games due to that uh, calf strain specifically and did impede some of his performance, as you can see uh, through some of his stat lines, but um, he didn't actually miss any games. He had a week two re-aggravation of that uh, calf strain, but again, did not miss any games. Now, in week 11 against the Ravens, he did suffer a season-ending injury to his right wrist. As you guys remember, it was a right wrist sprain that required surgery. Now, he did uh, specifically have what we called a scapholunate ligament tear that required a repair to make sure that that complex region was stable. If you're wondering what a scapholunate is, um, that is two wrist bones um, specifically that is closest to the uh, arm itself. One of the scaphoid the scaphoid is actually close to the thumb. The lunate is adjacent to that and specifically kind of in the middle of the wrist. Um, and as a matter of fact, the lunate is one of the most dislocated wrist bones in the body and is um, most common in some of our athletic injuries from wrist brains themselves. Uh, but he did have surgery in November 2023, Dr. Thomas Graham, um, and um, a success rate for something like this is about 80-85%. So the percentage is really high, barring any setback or re-injury or uh, contacting in on that wrist specifically. And when you're looking for the timeline of recovery, it's about four to six months. We're about in June already, so it's already around six months. Um, and as if you guys are keeping up with some of the training camp and looking at videos, uh, looking at OTAs, he is already making throws um, without any limitations and, and or restrictions. And when I was kind of analyzing some of his throws already and looking at his mechanics, specifically the throwing mechanics, um, he's got great ball velocity. His wrist is actually moving into full flexion and extension. We call deviations, some pronation, supination. He's making all the directional movements of that wrist and he's able to really keep a nice good grip on that ball and has really good control during his athletic movements himself. He's rolling out, throwing, you know, he's throwing long bombs um, and deep down the field. Um, he's already making all those throws specifically and there are no reports that there is even setbacks or even pain uh, associated with some of these movements themselves. Now, ideally, you know, he's gonna be dealing with some intermittent swelling um, and we call synovitis in the wrist just from the surgery and the complex region itself. But that's to be expected. I don't expect that to be influencing his uh, performance going forward. I mean, something they can manage really well, um, specifically. His coach has actually embedded one day of rest every single week for him so that they continue to manage his time, make sure that um, specific, specifically during his like seven on seven drills and, and, and they're throwing a lot, that they're not overusing that wrist and they're giving him that day of rest to make sure that his body is optimal and good, really good position. But he's got no restrictions at this time you know the key to reducing the uh, risk of re-injury to that wrist would be one that he doesn't make a, a significant fall on that wrist right and they manage his symptoms as he continues to make more throws and more throws and more unpredictable throws uh, during training camp and leading up to the uh, preseason now, one of the key things for uh, to keep a you know an eye out would be primarily his progress um, during training camp, making sure that he's not suffering any other uh, soft tissue injuries, that he's not reaggravated the wrist itself, and then you want to keep that awareness throughout the preseason itself too. But from a fantasy football pr perspective, you know, with a bolstered O line and a top tier wide receiver rank, um, you can expect that Joe Burrow is going to be a top tier quarterback for this 2024 uh, season. I'm really excited to kind of see how he bounces back from last season and some of the injuries that occurred him and really reduced and impeded his performance, um, specifically things such as the, the relationship with uh, Jamar Chase 
and trying to bolster his performance as well. You know, but Burrow is set up for success, specifically for this coming up season, and should be considered a top tier quarterback. You know, as we head into 2024, um, his potential is really undeniable. Um, he can actually be a cornerstone to your fantasy football team, and you can be highly confident, just like I'm confident, that he can also be a cornerstone uh, in your team and going forward with throughout the 2024 fantasy football team. But that's it for Joe Burrow. Hopefully that gives you some more insight and more confidence on his outlook um, and what to expect for Joe Burrow in this upcoming season. Thanks for tuning in uh, to First and 15 Fantasy Football Podcast. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, or hit the bell icon so that you can keep up to date with some of this injury news and outlook. Um, you know, as always, leave your comments, leave questions. Uh, we're happy to get back to you um, as we can. But happy drafting. <laughs>